Hey, it's the Fulver Friday with LPNLT. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey well, LP. Me. <laughs> hey guy. Hey. Are you know I'm talking to the fans, the live audience, the live studio audience here in my uh, home. And um, now oh. that we're fully in June, you know, full steam ahead into the summer, I was wondering if you had any, you know, summer plans, things going on. Oh gosh, I know. I was actually lamenting the fact that there's no like real vacation in 2020. So we're trying to like mark the holidays and celebrate where we can. So like the only thing on our calendar really this year is Amelia's birthday. She turns oh, yeah. in July. So next month. So wow. you know, getting so what are your plans for the, you know, the big day? Oh, number one, she's three. She doesn't remember. So she's not getting anything like big and exciting. Like why are people investing in parties when the kids don't remember? Okay. I don't know. I know you're gonna no. have a party. You know the thing I don't understand? Maybe you already had this and maybe I shouldn't be saying this to you, but like the mm-hmm. the cakes that you get just for like when a kid turns like one just so they can pound the cake. Oh uh, yeah, we did that twice, and that's really important. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is the what is the thing behind buying an expensive cake just so your kid can smash it? That's a really no one's ever posed it like that. It's actually ludicrous. Like, why are we doing that? It's a waste of a cake. You might as well just give them baby food. I mean, like, wouldn't they like the, you know? Yeah, like it better. Butternut squash and carrots. Bake better. My birthday parties were because my mom was like an elementary school teacher, so she came up with, you know, these like really creative things to do. So like pin. So I had long, I had long hair. So I may have mentioned this to you before, but we had like pin the braid on Laura. Yes. So it'd be my face, and everyone would have like a braid, and they'd have to like pin it on me. Yeah, that's. I mean, on like the drawing of me, not my real. Not I don't know. Real it's like also as strange as a smash cake. I will have to say, I think birthday parties are overrated. Yeah. I mean, like I'm, especially when you're older. Like no, nobody needs to like celebrate and bring a gift because you turn 33. Like when is why is that a thing? How is that a? Th- what do you get a 33 year old? And we're back. And today we are talking about affiliations. So we're going to talk about three things, you know, our top three things about affiliations. LT, take it away. Okay. So really important to understand that an affiliation is a part of your Fulbright application, but not all grants require affiliation letters. All research grants require affiliations and some study awards require affiliations. If your study award requires affiliation, you want to be very particular when you're looking at the grant country page because they'll give you special instructions on the form that it takes. But in general, when we're talking about affiliations, we're talking about affiliations that will accompany your research grant type. Number two. So not ETAs. ETAs do not require. No affiliation. Number two is that the affiliation, um, who the affiliation is and their role can vary. So some countries will have really specific requirements with regards to who can write the affiliation letter for you. In many countries, that person has to be someone who's affiliated with a university or a research institute. So an academic who's writing the letter for you, who given their research background, their expertise is well suited to serve as a kind of ad hoc sponsor on the project. In other countries, they're way more flexible with regards to who can provide that affiliation. Some will say someone can be from an NGO, museum, archives, um, anyone who makes sense um, given the kind of research you're doing. And the actual role of the affiliation can vary. This can be anyone who's really directly involved with your research and supporting you throughout the way, serving as more of kind of a research advisor, to someone who's more of like an ad hoc mentor who you consult with occasionally, who perhaps is providing you access to certain resources or individuals that are necessary for your project. LT, number three. Okay, number three. How do you find an affiliation? It's not uncommon that, it's like a double negative, it's not uncommon, it's common for many of our Fulbright applicants not to really have a contact in country. Of course, you're going and proposing a project that uh, you may not have ever been to that country before, only for spend a little bit of time. So one of the challenges and one of the like um, opportunities in doing the research project is to source an affiliation using a lot of different uh, methods for finding an affiliate. One of those ways is actually just check your network, right? Talk with your faculty mentors, those that have been uh, engaged in academic advising for you. They may have colleagues in other countries that they can put you in touch with. You can do a Google search of the universities in your country 
Look at the department, look at the faculty, what kind of research is going on there. It's not uncommon for affiliations to be sourced through unsolicited email that requests a discussion to talk about a topic that interconnects your research project and that faculty academic scholarship. So don't be afraid, there's a lot of strategies for how you can approach those. We can help you in an advising session. There's also a lot of directories, maybe looking at past Fulbrighters from Georgetown who have gone to country before. We may be able to facilitate a conversation with you. They've been there for a year. They can often uh, refer you to people that can at least start that conversation, right? There's also a lot of other resources around finding an affiliation that you're gonna find in our guide in the bottom of the newsletter. So make sure you check that out. Plethora of strategies. A cornucopia of strategies. Cornucopia. <laughs> wow, that was, we're so enthusiastic and excited to do the questions from the Fulbright Fan Club. Oh yeah, man, I am like coming in hot. All right. So thanks fans for writing in. If you have a question that you would like read on air uh, for LP and LT to answer, please write Fulbright at georgetown.edu like this uh, fan has done and asks, what city would you most like to live in? Well, Denver, obviously. Why? Okay, well. I mean, I'm a proud Coloradoan, and I still feel like I'm from Colorado, or really, like, you know, I still feel like I'm a Coloradoan, even though I haven't lived in Colorado for, like, 15 years, like, full-time. Mm -hmm. At least 16 years. So do you always think it's, like, one of those things where grass is always greener, you're like, oh, that's where I grew up, and then when you get there, you'd be like, oh, I wish I was in D.C. No. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Denver doesn't have any humidity, and my hair doesn't do well with humidity. Neither. Oh, for sure. It would Denver definitely be mountains. You have the mountains. You have the outdoors. Yeah, so. lovely. The only thing it doesn't have going for it is the shape. I mean, it's just a box, but in some ways, that's endearing. That's great. As well. It's very easy to draw. Like when yeah, you're in school true. and you have to like you know draw your state. Do you know how hard it was to draw Texas? Yeah, but you got the like chimney. Okay, but then there's like squiggles and then it does this thing. It's like, shoo, like, yeah, but you can take some like artistic liberties and say, you know, you know what? Boxes are easier. You definitely had it easier. Yeah. And where I'm would not, you rather live? No, I've decided I'm not, I'm over cities. That's where the COVID is. So basically okay. I'm out. I'm like in the country. Decided to like go out into Walden Pond and seclude myself in nature. I thought you were gonna go with a beach. Oh, beach. Yes. I would go to a low populated, very relaxing, low humid beach. Hmm. Dream. Big. Dream, dream, dream. 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 <laughs> What's that from? I don't know. What is that from? What dream, that dream, from? dream, dream, dream. What is that from? I don't know. Hey, write in fans, let us know. Dream, dream.